Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Kios Value Working Group meeting, November 17. Uh, please add yourself in the minutes uh, if you want. The agenda is pretty light, maybe. Uh, so first is our like OSPO update, uh, OSPO++ plus plus update since uh, we had a great session. So any feedback or anything on that? What session are you referring to? Oh, the Aspo plus, plus plus the meeting that we did with uh, I think Josh was there. Oh, that big, big that big yeah. one. Yeah. 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 I gotcha. Um, yeah, it was good. I mean, I think like from a larger perspective, I think the story from chaos is that the like our interest is not in setting up OSPOs inside of universities but um, we are kind of at the ready to help in that process you know so there's going to be a point where um, when ospos are set up and they look around for tooling and guidance as to how to proceed from a very pragmatic perspective right i think that's where chaos comes in so, so to me, we're still just kind of in this wait. Mako, what's up? Hi, Mako. We're still kind of in this like wait and see mode. You know what I mean? Okay. So are we planning any uh, metrics around that aspect or? I don't think so, because I think we'd be overreaching a bit. Okay. So we i think we need to just kind of follow the model that we always follow in the chaos project which is to um kind of let let the communities that want the metrics and the toolings kind of speak up okay. and then we we help capture what it is that oh. they want mm. to to do i don't know what you think sean pizza man or nothing okay so like uh, we have this one metric in the development process, which is fair metric. And I think it is tied to this OSPO plus plus thing, like one of the metric related to that area. So, so yeah, I honestly, okay. So I know this is being recorded, but I still just can't get my head around fair. This whole, this whole thing. I just don't. For some reason, like there's things I don't understand and there's things I don't want to understand. <laughs> and this falls in the <laughs> things I don't understand camp. I just can't, looks like Sean fell off. Um, it's just things I can't quite understand. So do you, do you have some thoughts on this, Vinod? So I attended one of their meetings on the fair and so in that aspect, they were having two focus areas, fear on the data side and fear on the software side. It's like how uh, our data can be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, all these four principles. And yeah, I understand the acronym, but I don't understand like what they, I just, I don't know. So, so like, uh, like what I understand from their meeting is like they are trying to have this visible side of the data and for the software and they are keeping it separate things. So I don't know what the broader goal is. So I was not sure on that. I don't know. I think my my plan here is still just kind of in the wait and see mode. Like okay. I, I'm afraid if we develop some sort of fair metric. I zoom just sure. died. Maybe it was your pizza. Yeah, maybe. Um, my my concern is is that if we develop a fair metric like what you have here, you may want to. I can share my screen. So, like, if we're developing a metric like what we have here, that fair is just going to be this constantly moving target, mm -hmm. and we're never going to get this metric quite right. So, but what I've got, know. I've gotten two major themes so far out of my discussion with the folks looking at ASPO++ and University ASPOs, the, the first theme is 
alt metrics for scientific researchers, which is I think what we're <clears throat> what we're kind of looking at in the in the case of this fair fair metric. The other use case I've heard talked about a lot is measuring the tech transfer impact or providing a pathway for tech transfer impact for software produced that is open source through university research. Those are the two main use cases I've talked with folks about, mostly Jacob. Do, no, I okay, do you think they're in a, yeah, do you think they're in a spot that like we could actually develop them as metrics? Cause like, I just, no, every no, time I, can't every without, time we uh, get there, yeah. it's like this kind of vague cloudy hmm. area. But we could certainly develop the alt science metric types of things like along the lines of fair, because all of us do scientific research and we understand what's at stake there and, and how to try to make it digestible for people who are trying to measure scientific output. So uh, can you give me an example of what you're talking about here? So for example, if I'm a, I'm a professor and if I want to explain to my chair, as I will this year, why I've only published two articles, which is, it's like that's within the bounds of okay, um, but it's largely because I've written like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of lines of code um, for Augur. And I can use, I, I've used Augur in the past for tenure and promotion and I can use the Augur to show the things I've been doing with Augur and all the other stuff as an alt metric, but I have to make that up myself. And I'm uniquely situated to be able to do that. I think most scientists um, are not. Like, so are you proposing like, is this like a metric around hmm. your code contributions? Is yeah, this a metric around is, community building? Is this a I, metric I, around? I think, it, I think it ultimately is a metric model. I think it in, certainly includes code building. I think it includes commenting, uh, opening and closing of issues, opening and closing of pull requests, community management activity. Um, you know, things like for me, Google Summer of Code and, and trying to nurture the nascent Augur community. Um, those are all, those are all parts of it, but I don't think that's a metric. I think that's what we're starting to call a metric, a metric model. It's obviously much broader in scope than one metric. So, I mean, does, when you're in a, that discussion, does it really come down to things like PRs? Mm. Like the mm. number of PRs that you're attending to? I, th I, th so not entirely. I think, I think it comes down to showing the work, showing the percentage of the work that's mine this year as opposed to prior years which is a contrast that is stark because <laughs> i graduated students and have brought on new students and so my personal contributions have been greater to this year mm -hmm. than they have been in the five-year history of auger um by like several standard deviations so and then, it, and it also is, of course, the demonstration of funding and that publications are, you know, the two publications that I do have are largely auger driven this year. So, mm -hmm. um, I, know, I, do I, think, mean, I do think building software is, is marginalized in the academy and, and they, there isn't a way to express um, labor and value. I can also look at clones, downloads, forks. Uh, those are measures of impact. So do you mm. consider, like mm. in your discussion, is it considered that uh, you're doing service to a community and that service is a part of like bigger goal? So I've been, be my argument would be that it is a scientific output. Okay. Um, and I've always, you know, all most of my research has involved the output of software and I've always put that under scientific output not service. And I get, depending on the department and the year and the chair and all that stuff, I get varying degrees of uh, love for that. Um, 
But I mean, I think, I mean, like if I'm looking at a metrics model, I think we don't need OSPO++ to define that one. If we want to, I think it's better if we have OSPO++ involved for that use case. So maybe I'll give Mako just a little bit of context here. So OSPO++ is a, it's a group. It, it is funded by Sloan and Jacob Green is leading this. And it's about um, setting up OSPO's open source program offices within universities. So to help with like tech transfer things, to perhaps help with RPT processes, you know, just around things that are software-y, not necessarily grant and paper driven. Um, so we in the Chaos Project, we, we really don't have any involvement with setting up open source program offices. That's just not something that we do. But at some point, there's the OSPOs that are being set up. And I think there's a fair number of organizations that are or universities that are heading this way. At some point, they're going to kind of look around and say, like, what? OK, so we set up this group of people. Like, what tools do we have to start kind of getting our bearings on the world around us? And so that's where the chaos project comes in, is that we have processes by which to capture the things that people want to have captured. Um, and we have the tools, at least from a trace data perspective, to to actually capture that information as well. And so we're just we're trying to we're trying to balance between the open source program offices being formed, which is not really something that we're part of, but then being kind of at the ready when they are formed. And this is we've had this conversation with this group such that we can step in. And so I think we're what we're talking about right now is like do like horse before the cart, like do we wait <laughs> for the OSPOs to kind of form and listen to what they have to say in terms of metrics that they would like to hear, or do we try to predefine and you know, maybe and maybe it's a mix of both, predefine some metrics that we're pretty sure you're gonna want to see mm. when when your OSPO mm. is stood up. And I think Sean right now is talking about setting something up a little ahead of time. So that's yeah. that's the context. And so what's the relationship between, so, I mean, I'm familiar with FAIR or I've become, I mean, I'm vaguely familiar with it uh, um, before and become more familiar with it in the last like five minutes. Um, uh, so like, uh, I mean, I know that it's, it's like, the only context in which I've run into it is basically about like it, it's just like putting identifiers and like metadata onto like digital objects and that kind of stuff, right? Like so making stuff essentially like computer parsable and findable. Like that was my sort of um uh under I think so too. Yeah. Um yeah. and I think mostly focused on, I mean, I guess it's like very general, mm -hmm. but uh, mostly focused on you know the kinds of more traditional sort of like academic products. So is this about sort of like extending that? Um, uh, like the simplest version of this would be like, okay, great, let's extend that to other kinds of things, right? I don't, I, I don't think they, we're they just haven't they haven't figured it out. <laughs> they haven't figured it out, and they don't talk to OSPO plus plus. Okay, so like those two groups don't necessarily talk to one another, and in the chaos project, that certainly are not our job. I don't think to wrangle mm -hmm. that relationship. Like I don't want, I don't have much interest in doing that. Mm -hmm. And so the question would be, like, from a fair perspective, are there, like, is there a way that we could capture kind of like what you just said as a metric? Like, if you if you if you care about fair principles, here's kind of a simplified way of understanding fair. And my concern is, is that I don't understand fair well enough to actually try to formalize it in any way. Yeah, my understanding is very like superficial. It's like, like, have you put a DOI on your stuff? Like, have you like, so it's kind of like, you know, AAAI does poorly in this regard because they just have URLs. Um, and I don't know, like ACM does better or something like that, right? I, like, they do. <clears throat> I've, I've talked quite at length with some of the fair folks um, like Dan, I mean, and Matt has too, but I've had a few additional discussions with like Dan Katz and some mm -hmm. of the groups, um, uh, Michelle Barker um, and, and, and that, that small group there. So I have, a, I have a fairly good understanding of what fair is after and some concerns about the fact that they're trying to modeling fair for software after the fair for data initiative, because I think these mm -hmm. are two really fundamentally different problems. And I, I, 
on my list of to do's is to sort of articulate the chaos fair intersection. And maybe that's, that's my to do between now and the next value meeting is to try to put that on paper. So that what have, is that to you? Do you have it in your head at least? Um, so fair, I do. Fair has fair has a lot of principles and they're outlined in like a 30 page document. And I think I, as I go through the 30 page document, I have a non, I'd call it a non-linear association between the concepts that they're trying to implement and the things that chaos does. So it doesn't map neatly. It, ha, and it maps in a very sort of spider webby way. And <clears throat> that's why it's taking me so long to get my head to put it on paper and articulate it because it's not simple. I think it's there, but it's it's going to be it's like so an intellectual you, exercise. But what is what is the exercise? Is it to to kind of identify those principles and how so, we in the chaos project could articulate those as metrics, like how you might go about measuring those? I think it's more about where those constructs are already represented in the chaos project and the tooling that's available in the chaos project. Okay, where and the, then so where so like you've got all this stuff chaos is done here and all the stuff that's laid yep. out in this 30 page pdf here and it's it's like one of those tests where you have to match like different things at different levels of abstraction and different levels of comprehensiveness so okay. there are principles in fair that require a lot of lines from chaos and then there are you give me an example well, like the things that we were just talking about with regards okay. to software productivity and how is that okay. how is that reflected in making things available? The sustainability of a project, I'd argue, is one component, but another component is taking a look at what are all of the dependencies that each of these scientific projects have. So some of the so I would say it crosses the dependencies, the contributor and the velocity or activity around mm -hmm. the project, that's all part of making, you know, the, the fair software available to, and, and findable for other people. And I think, and this is where in the past, I think there's been some real pushback from the, science, the open source scientific software folks that we've talked to, but the absence of and so this is i also struggle with saying this all the right way but the absence of any organizing foundation or institute for measuring and cataloging open source although they offer one in the fair proposal there isn't any there's no money behind it right it's like an unfunded idea and so how do you how do you make that happen because there seems to be resistance to like the creation of this central entity for tracking this stuff on the one hand. And on the other hand, you have a really stark difference between what's happening in the R community and what's happening in all other open source scientific software. Like the R community is tight. Karthik has made it easy to, to accomplish the fair principles within the R community. But everything else, which is a lot of things, um is is not like there's no place to go to find it so can i ask you a question so with respect to the fair principles yeah do they so they have principles yeah well look at, vinod put it in there oh i did in the chat. Yeah. yeah but this might so is it is it document. is it reasonable to say that the fair approach has principles that they'd like to see kind of evident in software can, can you but, put it in the chat again, Bernard? Because I think it was when my Zoom crapped out. I don't have it in my chat. Thank you. It's in the minutes. Oh. It's right here. Is this a list of the principles? Uh, yes, they have. And, uh, I, yeah, I, so like the, the table three, which is 
um, table three. An example of the I, fair yeah. assessment of the fast me tool is a really good example of <clears throat> something that I think each of mm -hmm. these items is three, but, okay. it's on page 53 of the link. I downloaded the okay. PDF, so it, yeah, I was just saying oh. I don't have page numbers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh wait, here's table three. Sorry, I was yeah, I just no, put it on. Yeah, that's funny how it's it looks completely different when I download the PDF compared to when I am looking at another one. But uh, okay. so I think I think most of these like check boxes here have like, something in chaos that 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 gets at that. It may not be explicitly articulated as a metric in the same language. In fact, it's not, but it's, we also, it's, it's there. Um, and so showing so that the, utility okay, so I think would be helpful from a, from a fair perspective, but the, the fair people are also not fair. Fair is part of, I think, communicating this scientific value more broadly and creating criteria for evaluating it because administrators like checklists but I, i'm not there's and this is one of i would say a dozen documents with different ideas in it this being the most synthesized and comprehensive okay. uh, i would say the most synthesized of them but not the most comprehensive so there are other documents in their okay. repertoire that say not inconsistent things but elaborate on some of the things in more detail that are here okay yeah so is, is your argument that that fair I, provides like this right? right they provide this thing and that but they don't necessarily provide a way to measure or expose that thing there are i and mean there are groups like there's one in the netherlands that i've spoken to but not in a while who are trying to implement tools that measure the fair metrics um explicitly and okay and uh, my my argument would be that just looking at the fair metrics as they're expressed gets you a certain mm -hmm. it gets you to credibility with people who are looking at software as as a scientific asset to be shared and something that we can speak to as a as a evidence of uh, scientific contribution, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really get, so it gets to the credibility piece. It doesn't really get to the impact piece. And I think some of the things that we're doing add, add to the impact story that I don't think is clearly expressed here because I don't think that's the intention of this document. This, and this is one of the, and so this is why this has been a complex thing in my headspace, because what, what this really is, is it's an attempt to translate and map the things that were done in Fairford data to software as an asset. These are, if you read the criteria in table three, these are the types of things that are frequently seen in organizations that are trying to create standard ways of cataloging or recording data. Yeah, I think that one challenge is, is that a lot of I think this document is sort of serving two purposes, like the fair principles, right? One uh -huh. is a just and I think it's less like here's a description of a set of metrics. I mean, that may be part of it, or it could be part of it in the long term. I think a lot of these are things are these are things that are not actually stored, or at least some of these things in a structured way right now. And this is a description for we should when we build systems to catalog or to hold scientific software, we should you know, describe dependencies using structured metadata, right? Like, I mean, maybe that one's already done um, in, in various ways, right? Or we yeah. should have standard ways of declaring these things. So it's less like we need to measure these things which are already being done. Um, uh, well, I mean, I don't know, there's often like, it can be a little bit complicated, but we should, we should, I don't know, this feels like, like, <laughs> <laughs> these are things that should be recorded in a standard way from the perspective of like, you know, making this stuff sort of like findable or reusable or moving forward. Um, so uh, when I attended one of their session and this was the talk they were giving that these are the principles they have developed, but they don't know how to measure it. And then I asked them a question, 
like uh, what is your plan and they said we are collaborating with kiosk and we are looking at it how to measure it but we are not yet there so that is one of their to do thing but not it's not that they are there yet it, it it just feels to me like the 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 way for them to solve this is less like come up with ways of measuring data which is already there or at least right. like and, and and more like provide like like a survey or a structure some sort of structured thing for people who are publishing projects to record a lot of these things um um or at least some of these things where do we get these things what is the i don't know Like, how can we place? I mean, I think that there are answers to most of these questions, but I think that the answers are simply are going to be like often not stored in a structured way. And what this wants uh, is a description of those things in a structured way. So I put a few thoughts in the chat just based on what you said, Mako. Mm. You, you brought to me to be more, you prompted some clarity about. I, I said it, it's like, I think we need to work backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and actually show them how to how to get to the concepts that are underlying what they're asking for without asking developers to do a whole lot of things that there are no tools for them to do and there's no standard way for them to do it and it would add to their workload and not be a high priority for whomever is supervising the software development because that person's priority is usually I need this to work so I can run this experiment so I can write this paper. <laughs> it's it's not and make sure everything is perfectly described. Yeah, like a lot of these things like the data ones right if you upload something to like a fair compatible or like a you know like a fair subscribing sort of like data handling service they will just ask you a bunch of these questions right like as right. part of sharing data in those spaces right right, right. Um, and then they republish those things in ways that are sort of like consistent and well-defined metadata standards yeah and i think my my instinct is that software people the people who write software won't do those yeah well i mean they <laughs> might they might i mean i think that like certainly not everyone who publishes a, a project on github or gitlab is going to that's for sure right. um um maybe there's some additional sort of like veneer or something or some additional thing that you can build on top of that that academics who are trying to publish work that's going to be put into some sort of institutional repository or something right like um yeah. might do maybe there's like a plug-in to gitlab that ospo you know university ospos could do that could store these things um yeah but that to me seems like a much more like promising way of like making sure these things are trying like, like the alternative where you try to like infer answers to all these questions automatically just seems it seems really hard and error prone yeah <clears throat> like metadata clearly and explicitly let's look at f3 for example metadata clearly and explicitly include identifiers for all the versions of the software it describes to me that I think that objective is a little ambiguous. What is the software? Is the software where my one project? Or I think I would interpret that as the software, including really, you talk about identifiers for all the versions. I think, I think what you're talking about is the uh, versions for all of the dependencies. Um, then you might also be talking about <clears throat> the version of, if you release a version on GitHub, but or GitLab, but most, I don't know if, I don't know how most, I, I can't say most. I think, I think a lot of people writing scientific software don't go through the trouble of release versioning. So, uh, so my question as a group is like, how we move forward? What are the steps that we should think along or as a group to go in this step? Right? That is one of my concerns, like, okay, uh, we got this idea, we have this discussions, we are meeting them, like, what is the plan for us as a group to move ahead? This uh, challenging question. So listen to this conversation. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, I mean, I, I will take, I mean, I owe Michelle the document that I've described for like a month and a half now. So I would be willing to, I'm willing to just say I will have that draft finished prior to the next meeting, um, perhaps like the Monday prior to the next meeting, so people have time to review it. Just as a we're trying to just a, an initial attempt to articulate the chaos part of what this. Maybe you can do it with. 
maybe you could just do it with like one one just to show like yeah what, as opposed to trying yeah. to map the whole thing right just do one and say here's an example of how chaos could connect with f3 or whatever or f4. yeah just i mean i suspect some of these things actually are probably possible to infer so maybe find one that can be inferred and one that like you know would be more the kind of thing that they need some sort of like in additional uh, it seems like seems useful but okay So, so if we can do one, that means uh, that list can be in the form of all the matrix that we can consider them being developed over the period of time. I don't think it's necessarily about developing any metrics at this point. I think it's just about Sean. This is more of a, a model. So Mako, we talk about metrics models. So we have metrics that are kind of like these atomic measures, like say age of a pull request, for example or number of comments on an issue. Um, but each one of those metrics by themselves is not terribly useful. And we have like 70 of these things. And so we're, we're starting in the chaos project to create metrics models that bring together, say, a collection of metrics that are more meaningful to move a particular thing forward, whatever that thing might be, like understanding newcomer retention could be your model name. And there are a series of metrics that you could look at to get, gain a better handle on that. So. Um, so I think the the step would be for Sean to take a look at one fair principle and con consider how metrics could um, infer. Oops. Yeah, how I think it's a. Uh, I think it's part part of it is just showing that one. I like the idea of one example that is mappable, one example that is less easily or less obviously mappable, um, and maybe a summary statement about because there, there's these are adjacent problem spaces that are being approached from very different um, epistemological perspectives and uh, putting that in a succinct paragraph or two yeah. would be helpful as well and that, I mean I have I have struggled with the, the mental work of thinking about what what is this? I see the relationship intuitively, but articulating it has required many stops and starts and moments moments off to. I think I think doing that would be helpful. But then I yeah. think also attending to like Mako's point, which is if if some of these some of these principles like they can't even be inferred from metric because the data hasn't been articulated clearly. That is not our problem. That is right. not the chaos is problem to oh. create a system that captures that data right it could yeah it could be a, a metric if they wanted to apply some of the things that do work from chaos they could develop a metric with us you know, with our partner our partnership but that is capturing that is on them so come come, come kind of back a... come back once you're recording the constituent uh <laughs> pieces all right so i, th I think this uh, is fair i think this is good all right this actually helped me quite a bit understanding fair and the relationship with chaos. Um, well, that's good. Uh, to me, this this whole area, like it's such a weird area to me. Cause like when we talk about corporatized open source, like that, <laughs> like that ship is already like long, it's like way sailing. And we, we're just kind of in the wake of corporate engagement with open source. And we can just kind of capture what's already out there because that right. work has been so formalized for so long. I feel like this work is so emergent still that yeah. we're stuck in this weird, like <laughs> this weird area yeah. of creating OSPOs and trying to capture data around software. Like those are some of the first steps that need to happen. Yeah. And, but we're and, still part of that conversation. Yeah. And that's where that second sort of major use case of tech transfer. I think that's the use case that actually university administrators care about much more. Um, be, be, Say that again. The, the tech transfer use case for scientific yeah. or open source metrics. But they're starting from a no understanding of what a pathway to monetization looks like for an open source project like universities i'm with the with exceptions i'm sure that some of you could identify generally don't 
you know, create companies around open source software that's developed as part of their scientific enterprise. And yet right. that, that possibility, is, and the, the possibilities there are more sig significant. It's, it's just that business development and IP lawyer people, they don't understand it in any way that makes it uh, like a funding stream or a tech transfer problem right, right now. Like that, that those conversations that I have with our people when we are, when I talk to our general counsel, it's, it's always a long conversation because there's a lot to unpack that the lawyers don't understand. Right. And, and so for us in the chaos project to try to create metrics to help reveal that success of text transfer, like we're just, that's too early, I think. Yeah, we point. need, we need like Jacob to, and I think Jacob's on a path with at Johns Hopkins for actually doing that. I think that's his principal okay. endeavor. And those are his principal sponsors. Okay. Right now, like they see it, Johns Hopkins sees it and Jacob is helping them make it real. Okay, Which so probably can, make it real. Yeah, and I think that's part, part of what might be confusing with regards to Aspo Plus Plus is Jacob's use case is different than how the other conversations we've had about open source scientific software developed at universities have been focused. Right. And yeah, these, so the use case overlap is minimal. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for this conversation. This is actually really helpful. Well, thanks. Thank Mako for me. jumping in because he made some things clear that I was bambling about trying to articulate. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out everything. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, boil the ocean. Why not? <laughs> so then we have another uh, thing on the agenda, which is review the old metrics, and we have ten minutes. So what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are to let's just kick this to 2022. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Perfectly, as... fine. perfectly fine with me. We so Mako, just many... what, what this is about Mako is we have a bunch of metrics that have been developed in the different working groups over the course mm -hmm. of the last couple of years. And mm -hmm. kind of like reading some of your old papers, mm -hmm. you look at these old metrics and you're like, Wah. Well, I'm very interested in that. As someone who's not been actively following all this stuff, I think I will learn a lot from that uh, because it's my first time reading most of those papers. So um, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll come back whenever that's happened. So we just revisit them and just try to relook at if they make sense still two or three years ago. Well, I think that will be very instructive to me. So I look forward to doing that next year. So. Okay. That's good. Um, all right. No, that's, I'm trying to think of uh, where I might value. And there was actually something that came up. Sean, were you you were on the Asia Pacific call on yeah, Wednesday, weren't I you? I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was Wasn't it this one? Wasn't it uh, that uh June had a question about labor investment, or was it something else? Do you remember? Yeah. Um I don't remember I do remember labor investment coming up this week. I think it was in the Asia Pacific meeting. Mm hmm. I mean, labor investment is something that, you know, of course we can't calculate with any um, real validation, but we can estimate it consistently yeah. using Kokomo algorithm. I use the Kokomo algorithm in Augur as implemented. Um, oh, it was project popularity is what it was um, that June was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was... Uh that was the one where I was saying that there was, uh, I think, I think that metric model that we're working on, I think that's a, that's a metric model that we can look at from yeah. three different perspectives, the, the project owner, um, the development or contributor community, and then the yep. community of use yeah. that popularity has these three dimensions. And certainly it's part of what the academic metric people will care about but um there are three discrete uh foci for what we would call popularity i believe okay so this one so this could be a candidate for metrics model so basically vinod the what came up in the asia pacific call yesterday morning 
was the the metric of project popularity, which June okay. brought up, is it's just is she wants to understand it, okay, but she's not sure how to proceed based on how we've written this okay. particular metric. And so, like her argument was, you can take a look at a variety of things to help understand project popularity, right. Um, and she doesn't necessarily measure all of these things. So, for example, like people attending events. And That's what right. came up is that perhaps project popularity, because it's, you can see that this is a metric, Mako. This is, we, we ran into this early that some of our metrics are these actual like composite metrics. Like if you want to understand popularity, it's actually a collection of a variety of things. Um, and we're trying to avoid that. So any of these composite metrics now are becoming metrics models, basically. So like popularity would be this model to which a okay. variety of metrics would provide insight into so, that. So they are proposing that project popularity as a model and within that a download can be a metric, uh, forking yes. or a dependency can be metric. Okay, I got Correct. it. Yep. Okay. So that I think we're going to have to attend to this case. too. Yep. You have a comment, Mako? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right. And I, I, I get it. Um, yeah, I mean that that makes sense. Um, and so is the idea that there's some like is the concept that there's some like there's sort of like latent thing called popularity, and that all of these things are measures of it, and the model is supposed to somehow reflect it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Correct. That makes sense. So then we are going to like over the course of time or discussion, we are going to move this from a metric to a model then? Yeah, we would move it out of, so this is, ah. Mako, this is our giant list yeah. of keeping track of everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, we would move it out of project popularity, or I'm sorry, we would move it out of the value tab down here. These are all of our different working groups. Mm -hmm. And we would move it into the metrics model working group. Mm -hmm. And this would become a metrics model somehow categorized here okay is this still in draft mode or is this released what the this oh it's released. released yeah this is a released metric. metric so 2022 is going to be we're going to be spending a lot of time cleaning up our metrics is what we're going to be doing just this is the nature of working with documents i guess you know and as we have more people yeah. kind of reflect on them there's better ways to represent the work that we were doing from three years ago it's and I think we have to constantly to in the chaos project think about ways that make the metrics and our work accessible to others. And I think that's what we're going to be doing a lot in 2022. It's trying to reduce complexity. Yeah. Uh, so I think we are near the end of the meeting. We have four minutes. So yeah, anything else on the uh, folks that they wanted to discuss? Yes, I'm showing Mako the other metrics models. So for example, okay. we have a DEI event badging program that we run right now. We've badged 42 events. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, a metrics model that is comprised of these particular metrics that are all released. And so the model is the DEI event badging program mm -hmm. to which these four metrics is actually up to six now, but these four metrics help provide insight into mm -hmm. event badge or event uh, DEI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another model could be project decline. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you could take a look at to better understand the decline of a project. Mm -hmm. It may not be an exact science, but at least kind of gets you located in the right spot to think about the decline of projects. Yeah, totally. Makes sense. And Sean is in part of this process too. Sean is, is creating um, notebooks to which the trace data metrics model, like DEI event badging, if that's not something we do via trace data, but the one like the project decline that Sean would actually put these into practice so people could visualize. What so there'd they, be like, there's an actual, there is an actual model. Um, and like, so that it could be, be yes. all of these things are equally important or it could be something else. Uh, um, Correct. Okay, yep. cool. So there'd actually be a deployable model nice. with it as well. So not just the definition of it. Okay. Yeah. So just Vinod, you know our schedule, right? Yes. The chaos schedule. So we're not yep. meeting next week. We will yep, actually right. meet in two weeks for value. Yep. It's yep. going to sneak one in. Um, but then we're taking a month off starting like December 10th or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we have a value meeting after two weeks, then we'll be in a holiday mode. Yeah, so actually the week of, yeah, there's like a two week period, the end of November and the first week of December, we still have chaos meetings. So there will be one more value meeting before the end of the year. Right. Okay. Well, I, this was great. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'll definitely come back. I don't know. Two weeks. I'm going to be in Japan. I think the time zone may be quite bad. Uh, well, uh, um, uh, but I may also yeah. have like a faculty meeting immediately afterwards. In which case, why not? If I'm yeah. up at three AM anyway. So, yeah. um, uh, so so I don't know if I'll be back then. But I'll but I'll, I'll definitely. I'm interested in, in yeah. I'm interested in this conversation. This was this was super cool. Interesting. I'd love to well, participate. thanks for coming in. Thanks for waking yeah, up at seven AM. Yeah. Six to six AM. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Ready. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, buddy. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.